Dear ladies and gentlemen, esteemed members of the press, we have certain announcements to make today. Uh, on behalf of BMW Group Cultural Communications, I would very much like to welcome you and introduce the panel that is sitting to my right. First of all, the man who does not need an introduction in these circles and anywhere else is Jeff Koons, esteemed artist. Thank you very much for being here. We've been spending a lot of time with each other in the past months, and we'll be happy to see what you have to say and what you have to present to us today. And of course, next to him is Mr. Jim O'Donnell, president of BMW North America. Thank you, Jim, for being here. Of course, you live here. And um, another president right next to him, uh, not with BMW, but with uh, one of the most esteemed and um, uh, uh, great um, institutions of modern and contemporary art, Mr. Alain Sabin, president of the Pompidou, Centre Georges Pompidou in Paris. And last but not least, the director of BMW Motorsports, Mr. Mario Tyson. And I know you've been coming here to hear certain, certain announcements to be made. And those announcements will be made in the opening remarks by Mr. Jim O'Donnell. Thank you very much. Stand by, stand by the call. Thank you, Thomas, and uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I don't have a Blackberry on me, so it's not me. <laughs> anyway, uh, as Thomas said, today is a very important day for us because we have three important announcements to make regarding the BMW art program. 35 years ago, this program was born. It started as a, a gleam in the eye of a French auctioneer and a race driver, Hervé Poulain, who fostered the idea of inviting an artist to conceive an original artwork with a car serving as his canvas. Poulain's first collaborator was his friend, American artist Alexander Calder, who in 1975 painted the car you see displayed over here, a BMW 3-liter CSL, which looks as magnificent today as it did back then. As a sculptor, Calder freed himself from the formal structure of the race car and by painting it, gave it his own distinctive mark. And just as with his sculpture and mobiles, he used intensive colors and created gracefully sweeping surfaces, which he distributed generously over the wings, the hood, and the roof. In 1975, the BMW Calder art car ran in Le Mans 24 hours, driven by Poulain, Jean Guichet, of France, and American Sam Posey. We're delighted to say that one of this historic triumvirate is with us today, and it's my pleasure to introduce Sam Posey, one of America's great racing drivers, and now an artist himself. Sam, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. As we now know, the Calder car laid the foundation for the BMW art car program and paved the way for the 16 art cars that followed. Just two months ago, we announced that Jeff Koons, one of the most celebrated artists of our time, will be the latest to join the distinguished rank of BMW art car artists. Today, we are pleased to announce that the Jeff Koons art car will race at this year's Le Mans 24 Hours on June the 12th and 13th. This is in keeping with the great tradition of the first BMW art cars by Calder, Frank Stella, Roy Lichtenstein, and Andy Warhol, all of whom competed in the world's most famous endurance car race. Mark and the art cars program return to its racing roots. Kunz's canvas will be a BMW M3 GT2, which, I'm relieved to say, has recently been approved by the Automobile Club de l'Ouest to compete in this year's race. However, before the car takes to the track at Le Mans, it will stop over in Paris for a special debut engagement. And this is the second announcement we have to make this morning. On June the 1st, the Jeff Koons designed art car will make its world premiere at the Pompidou Centre in Paris, one of the world's leading cultural institutions dedicated to modern and contemporary art. And I'm so pleased that Alain Sedan, the president of the Pompidou Centre, has joined <laughs> us today. Jeff will unveil 
and sign his rolling work of art at the same venue at the Pompidou Centre, just as Roy Lichtenstein did in 1977. Over the last two months, Jeff has worked closely with the BMW team in Munich to seamlessly blend the artistic vision with the race car's sophisticated engineering. And this is our third announcement. Jeff is going to give us a sneak peek of his design in a few moments. So on behalf of the BMW family, we wish our BMW racing team and Jeff a wonderful first outing. Without further ado then, I'll hand you back to Thomas to take us through the rest of the programme. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jim. Thank you very much, Jim. I think, Jeff, I think we start off with you. I think we don't even have to make up the connection between you and BMW because it existed long before we all met each other. Um, in 2003, in an interview, you had said that you were interested in becoming part of the trajectory of, uh, of the BMW Art Car Series. And we approached you when you had your show, your, your big show of sculptures at the National Gallery in Berlin in uh, 2008, I believe. And you said you were still interested. And then we continued talking. And now we're standing here, you know, working on, uh, on the car to, to happen and be uh, delivered on time for the race. And um, what we are most curious about, of course, is you know, the, your, your visions. And, 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 and maybe you can share some of the designs with us that you, have, um, that, that you thought about while working closely with this car. OK. And uh, should we look at images while we do that, or just speak now? Maybe we do it now. I think everybody wants to see sure. whatever it is that you so, came up with. Uh, you know, if we can, uh, okay. Now, I just want to state that this is really a, kind of a, a design concept. I mean, this, there are a lot of aspects we're looking at here that this is what the car will look like. But I'm also going to be bringing this on a higher level. And I've been working uh, in uh, 2D and 3D in the computers, articulating everything. But I wanted to. Uh, create a uh, work, to uh, create a car that could really yeah, be on the same, uh, uh, hopefully, level of the work that uh, Warhol and Lichtenstein and uh, uh, Stella Rauschenberg, everybody uh, has done with their art cars. And so I wanted to really just look at the, uh, the type of energies that are involved in a car and kind of the type of subliminal design work that's been done to them as far as graphics. So I just started looking at uh, NASCARs. I would look at cars that raced Le Mans. I would look at drag cars. Mm -hmm. And just to see how energy was kind of depicted. And I would start to uh, look at uh, what would happen to an airplane when the sound barrier would be broken, what uh, type of forces would take place, or uh, light explosions, or computer uh, programs that, that are uh, playing with uh, bending light. And I ended up getting really inspired by uh, actually Christmas tree <coughs> lights that uh, just had some motion taking uh, place to them, a wreath and a tree. And that was really kind of one of my uh, mm -hmm. bases that I used for the design. It's actually also interesting. We see right here that the number is the number 79. And 79 was actually when the last art car was really racing in Le Mans with, uh, with uh, no other than Andy Warhol. He was racing in 1979 as M1. And Warhol's car actually had the number 76, which mm -hmm. in 1976, Stella was, Stella's car was racing in Le Mans. So I think it's a nice trajectory also in terms of the numbers uh, of your car. Yeah. But I mean, in the past uh, months, you have been working extensively with our engineers and our designers. And uh, I mean, you know, you, you're known as somebody who creates amazing sculptures, but a puppy, of course, is not racing. Um, but how, what were the challenges, particularly working you know, on a car that will be seen while it is driving, while it is speeding, you know, it's, it's, it must have, been, it must, have been added, must have added to the challenge of taking on such a project. Uh, absolutely, Thomas, that when it is uh, racing by, how fast, how much time you have to mm -hmm. look at it, the different angles that you uh, see of the car, whether you're in a stands and a bleacher, or whether you're just on a ground level. But also when the car is just sitting still, and uh, if you uh, see the car and it's right there, still to capture that type of energy. Uh, I wanted the, the viewer to also have an understanding that uh, you know, they're part of the uh, interacting uh, with the car, the type of kind of energy that they have uh, within them also. Mm -hmm. But I think really as a basic concept, I wanted the uh, aesthetic of winning. I mean, to me, it's really important 
that the team wins. Mm -hmm. So the inside of the car, the uh, the paint that's used on the inside is mm -hmm. the lightest paint that can be used. You picked a uh, silver color uh, for the inside, correct? Yeah. And and yeah. not and yes, the silver mm -hmm. and uh, it's for the uh, the aesthetic of just the physics because. Mm -hmm. You know, the physics are very, very important to this car, and winning's the most important aesthetic here. So, I mean, where we, where we grant freedom, you know, art, of artistic expression, of course, you know, to every artist that can do whatever they like with the car, but with you, with the car racing, of course, there's certain guidelines in terms of aerodynamics and other things that needed to, you know, be figured into your design. Um, also, you know, one thing that I wanted to share is that in, you were, because we, it was, we were eager to also have you have that race experience without being an actual race driver. And I think in February, you were joining in, at the racetrack in Sebring, in, in the southern United States. You were joining the American Le Mans. That's you. That's you. Was that really fun? Or yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was too much? Yeah. <laughs> said, but you were in the M3 coupe, I think, and, and, and the, you were also uh, on the driver's seat of the M1, of the historic M1 that Warhol was yeah. doing. So you were driving, you were riding in both of these, yeah. in both of these cars. Did the Sebring experience change your vision for the car, or did you try to figure in other aspects? Uh, I think that it helped uh, reveal to me just how important it is to have really high contrast and have a brutal quality to it because it really is just raw energy. And these cars are designed for just one purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's for that track, it's for that race. And that's the only purpose they have, nothing mm -hmm. else. There's no other outside parameter for them. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to uh, try to implant that into the surface of the car. Just, uh, you know, energy and it's its, it's only purpose. Well, we have uh, we have working months ahead um, and, a and a very tight schedule, but it's, it'll be very exciting to continue that project. Thank you very much, and you'll be available <coughs> for interviews later on, of sure. course. <coughs> Thanks a lot. I think I would like to continue. <laughs> I would very much like to continue with uh, with uh, Mr. Alain Sabin. Um, I think we've talked about your museum being one of the most esteemed museums on the planet three times now. I'm just going to say it one more time again. And uh, I mean, if we look at the BMW Art Car series, you know, there is somewhat of a French nucleus to it. Because on the one hand, we have the race in Le Mans. Le Mans is, I think, an hour and a half from Paris. We have Hervé Poulain, the godfather of the BMW Art Car series. It wasn't a PR or marketing trick by the BMW.